Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me as always is my good buddy and co-host Matt Siebert from Paria Strategic Design. How's it going today, Matt? It's going well. I, uh, I got an early start on the day, got uh, a good amount of done and looked out the window and it is uh, sleeting and snowing. So winter's here uh, in New England. Dude, it's shorts and t-shirt day in Texas. <laughs> So I'm uh, I'm really not I'm I'm not disappointed. Like a lot of people, uh, you know, they condemn the snow out this way, but uh, I man, I love it. I love the winter. I like pictures of it. I don't like to actually <laughs> be in it. <laughs> well, as you guys can see here today, we have Adam Himmenstahl from Better Proposals, which is an amazing piece of software that has drastically changed the way uh, I used to hate writing proposals, and it was the bane of my existence. And I don't feel that way anymore after almost 900 days of using his software. Yes, I went back and checked my receipt. Uh, so we are going to talk to him today all about uh, proposals. They do a lot of amazing like research and study on proposals. And I've asked him to come here and share some of his best tips with us. So good morning, Adam. How is it going today? Very well. Very well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're excited to dive in here and talk about this. So uh, before we get started, and I know we do want to talk about better proposals some towards the end of this episode, but why don't you give us a little uh, background and history of how you got to this? If I understand right, you had an agency, and uh, I think like most good products, this came, this was born out of the necessity of needing something better for proposals, right? So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, that's bang on um that's that's exactly i did my it. research <laughs> you certainly <laughs> did. uh well that's exactly it you know every every agency owner knows that proposals generally are a little bit of a pain they're boring to write they're slow you know if you don't convert enough of them then they're even worse <laughs> they're kind of made slightly better when you actually win them um but yeah it's uh it's not a fun task to do usually and we found exactly the same thing so We'd sort of transitioned um, from being sort of a design agency and a web design company to a software company. So we would go in and, you know, do larger projects. So they weren't sort of five, six grand websites anymore. They were 50, 60,000 pound software projects. So if you win one, that's a really good day. If you don't win it, then generally it means you've got to sort of wait another few months. So it really mattered to us whether we won these things or not. And what we found was that most of our funnel, if you like, was pretty solid. It was the proposal thing that really won it or, or lost it. So we just put all of our effort into getting that bit good. Um, so I just turned around to our dev team at the time and just said, look, I, you know, I don't like doing this PDF thing. It takes too long. I want to know when they've opened it, right? So, you know, if they're opening it up, looking at the price and going, no way, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> that. I want to know that. So then I can hit them with sort of some tailored follow-up that maybe is a little bit more ROI driven or time saving driven or whatever. Whereas if I know that they've had a real good proper look through it, then I know that I can kind of just, you know, let them do their own thing and they're going to make a sort of a fair and reasonable judgment. So that was a really, really, really big point. So we did that, um, used it internally for probably about two, three years, I'd say. And what we found was people were saying, that's really cool. You, you know, can you make this, you know, marketing CRM software for us? By the way, that proposal thing, can we have that as well? <laughs> and it's like, uh, well, no, yeah, I guess so. It's just a wild little thing we made, you know, so we could stalk you. Um, and yeah, people like the stalking. So we, we started selling that as well. And then a couple of years later, we sort of were looking at it going, actually, we've developed this thing quite a lot. Maybe it's worth putting this thing out as a standalone product. So we threw up a landing page, got more leads in 24 hours doing that than we had in the previous 12 months. Wow. The other business. So we were like, right, be smart enough to know you're getting lucky, made the uh, slow transition at that point, and uh, yeah, and the rest is history. I will and say, we'll, we'll get into some of the tracking features uh, when we talk about the software itself, but I wanna, mm -hmm. I wanna warn you that I think this is the best and worst feature of your software, <laughs> and I have some ideas for you. So, <laughs> what were you gonna say, Matt? No, I was just gonna say that it's funny how that works, that uh, you know, you've got a, uh, something that wasn't supposed to be or necessarily like, you know, was gonna be a product in the beginning, but it was just born out of necessity. And it, it's it's usually those those that uh, end up going to uh, sale, you know, becoming products that are the best ones, you know, because it, it's almost like, <clears throat> excuse me, 
like how uh you know when you say when you're buying gifts like you know you buy a gift that you yourself would like and those are usually the the best types of gifts so it's like you know you guys built this for your own interior use and then realized that you know there was definitely a market for it um and like you know that that just like it it's it's a good sign to a good piece of software you know something that that's been used for you said 3 years internally mm-hmm. before it was uh, ever released that's that's awesome well, there's a couple of reasons why that worked. One was the fact that generally what we were releasing was pretty bug tested. So we'd gone through a lot of the iterations that a product would go through, normally out in the wild, getting feedback, people writing about negative bits about it. No, that never saw like a day. We squashed so many of those issues already internally. And then when we sort of took it out, we had a pretty well baked product and then you know, then you start sort of getting real user feedback. I mean, one of the first bits that we never realized because when we were hosting this thing, we were hosting it on our own domain. So when we were sending a proposal, it would say, you know, Advantix or whatever it was, our company name at the time in the URL. And that made sense. Then when we copied this thing over onto better proposals, we just left it all like that. So when people are coming through and they're from, you know, Joe blogs, web design or whatever, they were like, well, I don't want better proposals written in the URL. well, of course you wouldn't like right why didn't i think of that before so like the first major feature we had to do was build in this idea of a custom domain so you know using your own domain so it looks like your software it was never something that i thought of because it was never an issue to us when we first built it but right. the second you put it out you you get that but a lot of things like normal software bugs usability things that had wound me up as i was you know the first and most um uh, heavy user. Um, so, you know, we we'd had a lot of that sorted out. So when we started doing sort of cold emailing and, you know, trying to get some actual customers, uh, which is how we managed to get our first 50 to hundred customers, um, that people were like, wow, it's brilliant. Works really well. You know, usability is there, good stuff. And Hey, look, it's got this custom domain thing. And, you know, that was, that was kind of the first, you know, phase, if you like. Yeah. It, everything gets thrown into a little bit of whack once you put it out in the wild and you have other people using it, I'm sure. You know, your story sounds really similar to uh, Laura Elizabeth when she created uh, Client Portal. It was the same thing. She had created this portal because she needed it for her customers. And then uh, she had a bunch of people asking her about it and it ended up being a hugely successful uh, product for her. So I think that's always how it works best. So let's uh, let's start here and pick your brain on some some topics about proposals. I think uh, we we've had a lot of conversations in our group and, and stuff like that about um, different ways people use proposals, uh, how proposals different from contracts, how people uh, some people spend a long time doing proposals and some people don't spend much time at all. So I'd like to kind of talk about how the 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 proposal and the process of using proposals in your sales, how important is the actual proposal to the sale of a project, uh, you know, in, in comparison with everything else that kind of goes into that sale? Really good question. So I think it depends largely what that sales process looks like. So let's just take two opposing examples, right? So let's just say that you have had a really good referral from an existing client that's used you for five years you've met with that new referral, you've got on great, you've asked really, really good questions and you know exactly what they're trying to achieve. You can demonstrate that you can do that for them as well. And then you send them a really crappy looking document. You're probably still going to get the job. Probably. Yeah. Because all of the basics are handled. Whereas if you flip that and you say it's a, it's a cold lead, no, they don't know you from, okay, no pun intended, but they don't know you from Adam. Um, you know, they've never heard of you. They've got no idea what you can do. You don't present any kind of proof. Maybe it's slightly outside of your scope a little bit, um, but still sort of within, within range. And then you send them a really, really, really good proposal. Well, you maybe just save that, but again, it's still an uphill task. So obviously the ideal situation is to have as much of that first scenario as you possibly can. Um, and then follow it up with a really, really good proposal just to alleviate any, any fears. But for me, fundamentally, I believe that it's the most important document or series of documents in your business. And if you don't do a very good job of it now, and you kind of know that, getting that handled will probably make the biggest difference to your income. Right. Because so it, it might not single handedly uh, 
win you a deal on its own, but it could single-handedly kill a deal for you. Almost you know, a bad one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you've got your basics right, and I've always said this to people, you know, I, I know I should be running around saying, you know, use this software, it's amazing, and, you sh and you'll win loads of deals and whatever. But the, the truth is, if you do a really good job of your discovery, and you ask lots of good questions, you find out all that's everything that you should be finding out, and what have you, then the proposal writing process is so, so, so easy. It's, it's a doddle. It's not even a slightly difficult task. But if you get that bit wrong, then all of a sudden the proposal process is a real, is a real nightmare. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it just depends on your situation and how you do things. If you don't meet up with the client or, or you know, you do, you know, you don't do phone calls and your presentation isn't that great and whatever, then your proposal is going to have to do a hell of a lot of work to get you the project. Whereas if you've got a lot of that in place, then your proposal doesn't have to do as much. So it's kind of like a, you know, rechargeable battery in a way, like at a certain point, you know, you've got to, you've got to achieve say 75% happiness from that client or whatever. And it, your proposal might be able to do 50% of it, but if you, if the rest of it isn't there, you're still, you're not going to quite manage it. So the easiest thing to do is just have your basics in place. That would, that would be my advice to anybody listening. So when it comes to, uh, to proposals, uh, in general, like I know a lot of people, they'll, they'll go through the, uh, the onboarding process. They'll, they'll, uh, go home after or to the office after the, uh, you know, the, that meeting where they, they do their project discovery and everything, and they'll send out that proposal. Um, now, are contracts usually part of that? Do you, uh, would you, would you say that kind of coupling the proposal along with a contract is a good idea? Or like most people that I know of, um, they'll send the proposal out, they'll wait, they'll hear back on it, and then they'll send the contract after the proposal's been okayed. Uh, so it depends on the deal size. And when I say deal size, what I really mean is, do they have a legal department? So if they have a legal department, sending the contract with the proposal is probably the dumbest thing you can ever do because the proposal will never get agreed because it will all have to go through legal. Whereas if you know that there's a legal department, and it's obvious. Do you know what I mean? If it's a huge corporation and like you've got a fridge with their logo on it, then they've got a legal department. <laughs> right. You know, just kind of use a little bit of common sense. Whereas if it's a if it's a small company, it's freelance projects or agency projects, and it's not, you know, household names. Then generally there isn't a legal department. I would put the two things together because there's no point. What's what's going to be in the proposal that they're going to say yes to, and then what are they going to what they're going to do? Reject it at the contract stage, and what do you do there? Right. That that <laughs> doesn't make any sense. And considering like you know timing is is usually of the essence with these things too. Like. I know that uh, you break down um, a lot of different uh, really cool analytics about proposals on your site. Um, and one of those is that, uh, and I, I, it, I can't remember exactly what it was off the top of my head, but you know, going home and immediately sending that, uh, that proposal out after the meeting, um, th how, much, how much more does that convert? So we've run two reports um one was for 2017 one was for all the data was from 2018 um and both of them were a significant increase so the 2017 one was a 24 and a half percent increase and the last year's was uh, i think 14 or 15 percent so you're 15 percent more likely or if you're going to average it out you know 17 percent more likely to win the deal if you send it within 24 hours versus just three to four days. So it's, it's like three to four days isn't even that unreasonable. No, it's it really not isn't. Not, not, not really. It's not like it's two weeks. It's, yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty reasonable. So um, yes, I mean, it, it, uh, what's interesting about it is that you're comparing something that's completely reasonable, completely normal versus something that, you know, it's 24 hours. I mean, it's, but if you've got a good system in place, it's really easy to do. So yeah, I, and I, I do want to talk about that too. I, I, I have a, when we get when we get into the software specifics, I do have kind of a system that's allowed me to to do these quickly using better proposals. And I think it was an interview I heard with you uh, giving the tip just to if you go meet a client somewhere, 
uh, when you get done with the meeting, walk them out the door, whatever you need to do, go right back and write the proposal right that second while it's while it's all fresh on your mind. Hopefully, I'm not uh, quoting someone else and giving you. No, a, no, 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 that was me. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I always I always found that to be the best thing to do because you know if you think about when you're sitting down with a client and they say things that are important to them and they describe you know if you've had a fairly in depth conversation and they're sort of describing the state of their business and all that kind of stuff and then they're describing how things are feeling and it's their emotions and it's the words that they use and it's all stuff that's important to them and if you then leave it three days you're going to forget all of those things you'll remember the basic facts like oh they wanted to increase this or that and you'd write those notes down but what you wouldn't write down is the emotions that they were feeling and yeah the sentiment they... behind it right exactly and it's it's those things are really 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 important and if you can capture that stuff and you can capture that in the proposal they're going to read that introduction or that first sort of meaningful piece of text and go they just get it mm -hmm. that's the feeling that they're going to have they're going to go ah oh, they just get me they get my situation they know what i'm trying to do you know and, and that's how they're going to feel about it and that's really that's kind of where you win and lose the deal is when people are reading a proposal all the information sounds right and they just the words are right but i just don't feel like they understand me you know and i think that in a lot of ways is where a lot of people lose you know lose the deal really is is in that but you smash that and you can ask good questions you know remember the emotions, the way that they were describing things, the real truth behind it, and then you can go and write that down super quick. You're going to smash every proposal you make out of the park. Well, let's, uh, let's dive into this a little bit. I know uh, Matt brought up all the the analytics and stuff uh, that you, you guys have um, captured over the years through all the data in your software. So what are some things you found that we could change pretty easily and quickly about our proposals that would give us a good boost in conversion rate. So mistakes you commonly see people make uh, that we could change pretty quickly uh, to, to improve that. Uh, okay, so the first thing is to make sure that your proposals are responsive. So um, over half of all, well, we, we know that around 70% of emails opened on phones. According to our data, around 50% is, I think it was 40 eight percent was opened on either an ipad or a, or a tablet or a phone so that's a huge amount of people you know roughly half of the people are opening your proposals on a phone or a tablet so if it doesn't look good on either of those two devices their first experience 50 percent of the time is going to be a bad one so really just consider that there's there's different software out there that does this of course better proposals is one of them absolutely handles that you're essentially building a mini web page um so you know, it's automatically handled and you just put your content in and it makes sure that it always looks good on any device, much the same way that, you know, websites work. So that's probably the main thing that can be easily handled. And you can just sort of choose some good web-based software that does that. Of course, Better Proposals is one of them. Um, the, the other thing is considering the length of the proposal. Now, we've got some data around this uh, that suggests that six pages is the optimum length for a proposal. Now this isn't pages of paper, so it's not that, it's sections. And I think really in digging into the data, um, we don't have any conclusive answers just yet, but in preparing for this year's, um, the 2020 report, we've looked into sort of how that breaks down and what, we've kind, what we're kind of seeing there is it really just sort of depends on the deal size. So there's a, there's a linear graph between the length of the proposal and the deal size. And then there's, it sort of gets a little bit weird. So conversion drops when you start to pass a certain point. So if you've got, say, let's just call a large deal $30,000, right? And you've got two pages, that's clearly out of whack. Likewise, if you've got a 16-page proposal and a $200 website <laughs> edition, that's also out of whack. So what we're seeing is we're starting to sort of draw some distinctions in there. It's like, okay, somewhere around there, there's a nice happy medium where the amount of content matches the deal size. Um, and I think that's something that's worth considering. I don't think you need to look too much into the data there. You just need to use your brain and just think, just put yourself in their position. Does this seem like overkill? Um, but it depends on your experience. You know, if you've got experience of receiving proposals and you hate reading them, then you're never going to want to put somebody through 
the ordeal of reading some big, long, hefty document. So it does depend, but you do have to also kind of fight your instincts in a way. And a lot of people don't like putting things like case studies in proposals. They don't like putting contracts in. They often, some people don't even like putting prices in there, which is even more mental. Hmm. Um, we actually had somebody come through on, um, on chat the other day that wanted to remove the pricing because he didn't want his client to have sticker shock. I'm like, that is what the whole, that's <laughs> what it's for. Like, I'm, I'm racking my mind trying to figure out how you would write a proposal without including any, no, uh, any costs. Uh, yeah. In, in, in the guy's defense, he, he actually wanted to list out the individual pricing. He didn't want the totals there. Mm. I'm like, man, get over it. Like at some point, you know, I say it with love, but like you, you've got to tell him at some point, if you can't own that price, then you've got issues. Go like, I don't mean that in a horrible way. There's, <laughs> there's a lot, there's a, there's probably a lot to uh, being able to say that price with confidence too. You know, yeah. you're probably going to be a lot more likely to win it if you can say, yep, that's the price and feel good about it than if you're scared and not wanting to show them. Yeah. I mean, it's um, a, a partner of ours, a chap called Marcus Rideout, who teaches um, videographers and video makers how to kind of do what you guys do really and just teaching people how to sell stuff for higher prices. And he's got this really, really great uh, practice where he's like, if, if you can't sit down in front of a client and say, that's going to be $10,000 and hold it and just not move, not waver, and just believe that that is a totally reasonable thing to say, then if you can't do that, then you need to practice that and practice it and practice it and practice it until it is just normal. It's just like going, oh, you know, do you want to handle this? You know, just, it's a normal thing to say. You know, all the time that's a big deal. You're never going to get them to believe that that's okay, ever. And I think that's a really, really good lesson. So you know, whether, whatever that amount of money, that was just an example, but that, that amount can change, but whatever that sort of like $10,000 is to you, we're assuming that's a lot of money, um, practice doing that, you know, just really practice owning that sentence because until you can do that, you're never going to be able to break past some of those uncomfortable price points. Yeah. Somebody else isn't going to believe it if you don't believe it. Yeah. And it's funny, uh, Kyle and I hopped on a call like a little while ago, just he and I just chatting as we do. And we had pretty much that same conversation where, you know, sitting down and, and owning that price is it, it allows your, your client, uh, or customer or however you want to call them to, uh, like it gives them a little bit more trust in you too. Like if you, if you can't own your price, then, you know, that's going to send up some, some major red flags to a potential client. Massively, massively. And there's so much of it is subcontext as well, or subtext. You know, if, you, if you're sort of like, it's going to be this much, like, and your body language is weak and your sort of your, your voice is lowered, it's always going to be a really, really difficult way. It, it's going to be difficult for them to believe you and it's difficult for them to, oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. But, you know, if you're sort of sitting up straight or you're standing up, whatever you're doing, and then you own that piece of information, you, you communicate that clearly, you're not wavering from it. That's, that's a sign of strength. And that's why you look at people like Tony Robbins and you just go, well, yeah, I'm just going to believe anything that guy says because everything he <laughs> says is like so ridiculously confident. It doesn't matter how much nonsense it is. You just believe it first and challenge it second. So yeah, for sure. There's definitely some lessons there for sure. So we're covering uh, things that we can start doing immediately for uh, like that, that are good. Now, on the flip side of that, what do you notice that people do with their proposals uh, that they should stop immediately? It's like uh, yesterday. Sending, PDF. sending PDFs. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the easiest way to look like an antiquated company, especially, especially, especially in this industry, in the, in the web space, in the digital space. You're, think of all the things you're saying to people that are important. It's, in, it's important that this is responsive. It's important that you know, things are clear. It's important that people can use things on mobile, all this kind of stuff. And then you go send them a PDF. It's, it's like all that good work, you've just undone it in one, in one move, you know? It's, it's probably the easiest way to sort of, you know, make, make something difficult. So uh, yeah, whatever you can do to avoid sending PDF proposals, I would, I would absolutely take steps to do that. And, you know, if it costs a couple of quid a month, then it's a very small price to pay to keep that, you know, perception of your business high. I mean, that's, that's what a proposal is. I mean, if you think about it, think where the word came from. I mean, you don't propose to a girl and, you know, 
we, we call them joggers, but like what do you call like <laughs> sweatpants, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> you know, it's like you put your suit on, you do this whole thing, you make it all cool. It's like, look, just if you're going to look at it in a really simplistic way, think of it in a similar kind of way. You want to put your best foot forward. Um, so doing something that's really is you know that's really weak is is not is not the way to go yeah, um, there is not... debate behind that i can't remember off the top of my head but it wasn't it wasn't great people that were exporting proposals and then sending them um wasn't looking good for those guys and it, it's not really consistent with your your brand too i mean if you're in a digital space building websites or you know whatever it may be that's that's in this digital space doing these things to send something like you said that's a little bit more antiquated uh it's not it's not uh congruent with everything else you're you're putting out to them so i mean even if uh, we'll get into it but i think mm. better proposals is a steal and i would i would don't tell adam but i would probably pay twice as much as i do for it um <laughs> but you could literally if you couldn't afford to do this and you didn't need all the awesome features that come with it you could make a custom post type in wordpress and put together a responsive proposal yourself fairly easily and that would be better probably than a pdf yeah i agree i agree i mean um there's obviously an awful lot that you don't get when you do that kind of thing, but sure. I mean, it would be a significant improvement over, um, over using a PDF. It would look, it would at least look like you've done something different, you know, and that's, that's sometimes the most important thing is, and that's what we've tried to do as, as, you know, product designers is look at, you are going to get a 76 year old dude. Who's not really that familiar with any of this stuff who's being sent a proposal and that's that's just normal you're going to get that it's going to be sent to a whole boardroom full of people it's going to be sent to people that are you know of our generation so it, it's got to make sure that it's familiar but also stand out as well and how do you ride that balance and that's something that we think about all the time when we're looking at different design options and how things should be displayed and the communication and all that kind of stuff so yeah it's it's um it, it is it is super important so I think we, we could probably continue these tips forever, but I will say, and I want to make a plug here for um, the the university setup you have on your website where there's tons of education. So uh, I know I went through all of this as soon as you released it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Better Proposals University and, and who can register for that, check it out, what they can learn from that? Uh, yeah, so it's completely free. Um, it's a it's a two-part um, two video series. Um, it's split up into proposal design and proposal writing. So proposal writing is very much, you know, the kinds of things we're discussing here, but is some of the data's mentioned and things like that, but really it's just breaking down what your proposal should include, each of the different things that should be in it and how best to write them. So little tips on how to, I don't know, write your introduction, how would, how's the, you know, how should you do that? And what's made up of a good introduction and what does a bad one look like? Moving on to the next section is da 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 da. And it, it just breaks you down and just goes through the whole thing. Um, so if you don't know really much about writing proposals or you do, but you want to kind of change how you're doing it, then I think the whole course, I think it's like nine videos and I'm pretty sure the whole thing comes in less than half an hour or 40 minutes or something. So it's, it's totally watchable, um, you know, it, it, over lunch or in the evening or whatever. I'll say you're, I think you're underselling it a little bit here. Um, he, he calls it a series of videos. Uh, technically that's true, but I mean, it's set up like a course, uh, like you would go through a nice course. There's, uh, there's material, everything's, you know, kind of written out and explained for you as well. Um, and it's, it's really useful and it's full of tons of tips. So I would definitely recommend if you're, if you're interested in this, uh, this show so far, you can get a lot more detail if you go sign up in there. And the other thing I wanted to bring up is, um, um, and we, we referenced them a couple of times in the show, but we'll make sure to put links in here are the, the proposal reports you've done, which are, uh, which are not only super interesting, um, kind of like everything you do, it's designed really well. Uh, they're really fascinating to look at and read through. So basically, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, it looks like you've taken a couple of times now a year's worth of data and figured out what works and what doesn't work and kind of put it into a page that's a giant infographic. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so every, every year um, around Christmas, um, Sabrina, my co-founder and I, uh, we take sort of a, a week and we look through asking ourselves the question, does X help improve conversion? And it will be random stuff, like does 
sending the proposal quickly help? Does using video in your proposals help? Does it make a difference if you if the pro if it's exported in PDF? All these different things. Every year we try and add to it, um, and then basically we spend the whole of the month um, of January putting that thing together and compiling it, and then it comes out usually the first week of February. Um, and it's basically from all of the previous year's data. So there's um, yeah, so there's, there's there's something that's really cool, but. I'll tell you this much in a few weeks um you guys will know about this anyway if you're on our list but in a few weeks we're going to be releasing something that takes that somewhat to the next level but nice. i think we're gonna to have to leave that on a teaser i'm afraid um, well, well i'm excited because every time i've seen the, these last two that you've done i've i mean i've gone through them probably 20 times and it's super fascinating i think one the designer in me just really likes the way these are laid out so beautifully uh but also it's just really interesting information and you put enough out there to to make the point and say hey here are these facts but there's still some kind of deducing you have to do in your mind so i was kind of looking through here uh one thing you mentioned in last year's report was um you can increase your chances of converting a proposal by 78 percent if you don't send a pdf so in your software people are actually allowed to uh you have the option of allowing people to download a pdf copy of it and print it out um what what I'm guessing you're saying here is uh, the people who do that are probably less likely to sign the proposal. Well, yeah, because we're looking at the whether it gets a signature. So if you print it out, then you're putting a great big roadblock in the way of the sales process. How can they sign it if that doesn't happen? Now, we should be fair. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean those deals didn't go ahead. That would be you know, a fair assumption at the end of the day, it is aggregated data. So sure. we can look at this as signposts rather than, you know, Google maps, if that makes any sense, you know, yeah. so like these indications. So when we're saying things like, you know, send the proposal quickly, look at the percentage data. If it's like 1.3% more chance, it's probably negligible. If you look at like the video thing, for instance, in there, um, you know, the first year we did it, I think you were like 4% more likely to convert if you had a video in your proposal. And then this year, I think it was like 1.2% or something, whatever. So it's like, look, if you're a video company and you, you actually sell video, then yeah, probably put a video in there. It's going to, it's going to help. Right. Um, but if not, and it's a lot of effort, then it probably doesn't move the needle that much. So probably not worth jumping through all those hoops just to put a video in there. So it, it does. It's, as I say, it's signposts. Look at it, make a judgment call. You know, if you something you see in there that's nice and easy, then great, go for it. But if it's if it's something that you, you find difficult or the video thing, you know, pass it off. If the juice isn't worth the squeeze, right. So an another one that I saw in here um, that I've actually, I, I actually got a proposal signed not too long ago uh, because I had this in here was integrating live chat into your web proposals. And in the statistics from last year, uh, it says putting live chat on your website uh, for, or try putting live chat on your website for a 13.2% increase in conversions. And what happened in my scenario, and I'm sure this is similar, is the customer had one little question that they needed answered before they could sign. They hit the chat button, asked me, it popped up, I answered the question, uh, and they signed the proposal immediately. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. Which, um, which service did you use to integrate it with? You know what? It's been a while. I actually took it out after that, which now I'm wondering why I did that. Uh, I want to say I had it through talk to, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah. yeah. There's um, well, then what's really cool about this. And I, th I think a lot of people miss this point, but almost all of those chat services have a free plan or, you know, like a free usage to a certain point. So mm -hmm. in, even if you don't use it on your main website, you should at least go and sign up and use it on your proposals because the volume is going to be way lower. You'll probably never hit that limit, that free plan limit. So it's as good as free. I mean, I'm pretty sure Drift have still got a freemium plan. Um, so it's like, I don't know what it is. They might have changed it now, but I'm sure at one point it was like 50 contacts a month. Like you're never going to hit that. So, right. you know, you can just have that one account just for your proposals. And then you can use a real sort of like premium level chat service on your proposals. I mean, that's just such a, guys are such a cool experience. Like think yeah. about it from, you know, the person who like runs a flooring company or, you know, is doing like, I don't know, a builder or whatever it is that you're, selling to this to this person i think how cool it is for them to interact with this thing and 
get and just have this thing presented in in such a cool and unique but familiar way and have you as the person writing it have the ability to just focus on them for once and instead of having to spend i don't know three and a half of your four allotted hours putting this proposal together you're spending 95 percent of the time just thinking about their problem their solution and whatever instead of having that be an afterthought to the design um so yeah it's there's there's, there's many there's, there's many things that I, I, I would like to say on this stuff but it's really just gotta like pick your battles you know and thinking about your client and making sure that you're getting their problems and solutions mentioned and clearly identified is probably the most important thing you can put in there because you get that wrong everything's an uphill struggle Awesome. Well, let's uh, let's dig into better proposals itself, so we can talk about uh, how your system works and why people might want to check it out. If you want to, you can go to theadminbar.com forward slash better proposals and go to the website and follow along as we kind of talk about all this. So, uh, as I said, kind of at the top of the show, I've been using better proposals for nearly 900 days, which is amazing. Uh, when I realized that, uh, so I have a I have quite a bit of experience, and there's some things I'd like to interject in here just from the user point of view. Uh, but first, Adam, why don't you kind of tell us, give us your spiel about Better Proposals uh, and what, what about it you think makes it special? So I think what makes the, um, I think what makes Better Proposals different to most other methods of doing this and other proposal software is the fact that every little decision that we've made around the product is there to remove a decision from you. So when you look at the, design options, there's less than that you'd find in some of our competitors. There's certainly less than you'd find in, you know, Word or InDesign or Pages or whatever. So the reason that we do that is so that you have less things to think about and you can spend more time thinking about your client. And ultimately, that is the biggest reason people lose out on deals. Um, the other reason that people lose out on deals is because they don't have things like the ability to capture a digital signature nice and easily. So instead of getting your client to have to print something out, sign it, you know, scan it and email it back or whatever, all they've got to do is type their name. Anyone can figure that out. So you'd hope. <laughs> <laughs> since <laughs> I have seen some wacky situations, but yeah, yeah. So most of the time, people can figure out how to type their own name, <laughs> and that's what they have to do to buy from you. So generally, what you want to do is try and make things as easy as possible. So by using something like Better Proposals, so many of that stuff is just handled for you. It is constantly optimized to make things easier for your client, and ultimately, it means that you should be converting a lot more but yeah there's there's all there's all sorts of different things i know that the probably the the biggest feature people love that um have never used software like this before is the tracking um that this allows you to see things like um you know when they've opened it but more importantly than that what they've looked at what pages in what order for how long so you know if somebody comes along and you know looks at the price and closes it down then you know that you're kind of dealing with a little bit of a tire kicker or a window shopper. Whereas if they read everything for 20 minutes and you know really spend a lot of time on each of those pages, then you might follow up a little bit differently. So you get armed with a lot of information there, um, and it's, uh, it's it's always a it's a very popular feature, but it's um, it's a bit of a devil as well. I, it, I will say this this is my favorite and least favorite feature. <laughs> so when before I was using this and I was just sending you know, a PDF or whatever to my customers, you'd send it off and then you'd just sit and wonder what was going to happen. Yeah. You'd wonder if they'd opened it. You'd wonder, oh my God, they're probably shocked at the price. They're probably never going to call me back. And the truth is they probably just hadn't checked their email yet, but you sat there and sweat the whole time. And because of the way Better Proposals works, you send it off to them. You get a notification when they've opened it, then you can go in and track everything they're doing basically in real time. Uh, so you can kind of see how they're using this. Now, what I've had to do is teach myself to uh, see that notification and tuck it away and I'll go back and check it later. Because my problem initially was I would go obsess over why are they going back and forth? What are they doing now? Why did they close it? They didn't sign it. What's going on? So I've, I've learned to like uh, have some some restraint in this department because it will drive you insane trying to like figure out what they're thinking uh, because you can see it as it happens. Yeah, it's um, 
it can be a little bit it can be a little bit of a, a, a danger um and you, you do have to do that you do have to use it with a little bit of restraint i mean as i say people people use it and um it's a it's a popular feature because people like knowing what's going on but ultimately the thing that you really want to know is what's going on in their head and yeah. um and I, and I've had the customers because I do include, uh, I do include my basic contract inside of my proposal. It's like the terms and conditions page. Uh, for the most part, that stays the same project to project. And I rather get one signature. We'll be done with everything and let's move forward. Um, but I, I have noticed some customers will stick around a long time on that page. And it kind of leads me to the next time I have a conversation with them, that's probably where we're going to need to go with it. There's probably something in here that isn't working for them or they're not understanding. Um, so I can usually kind of take that information. I've kind of spied on them a bit and be able to go straight into those things and kind of help uh, figure out what, what the holdup is. Yeah, and I think what's also really cool is, you know, once you do get over the obsessive part of it, uh, you, you do get to a point where you, you can you can tailor your kind of approach as well. But more than that, it just gives you a level of confidence that it's been delivered and then you don't need to worry. If they haven't read it yet, they haven't read it yet. That's cool. Like just leave it or maybe they opened it real quick and closed it down. You kind of go, all right, just just calm down. Don't worry, it's, it's all fine. But when you follow up with them, it means that you don't follow up from a place of weakness. You're following up from a place of strength. And I think that's really, really, really important. So you can do a really great job in the meeting. You can send them a really great proposal. They can like you, they can be referred, but you can almost, I don't want to say ruin it. That's really unfair, but you can do quite a bit of brand damage, personal brand damage by following up in a really weak way. So a weak example of following up would be, hey, did you get the proposal? <laughs> do you like me? Happen? Check yes or no. <laughs> Right. It's not a good look, is it? You know, it's it's a, it's a bad look. And, and the fact that you then don't need to do that. So it means you can follow up with a lot more confidence. So if you know that they've read the thing or they've had a look at it and they've at least got it and they've had a little bit of a look, you can send them a case study. You can send them, you know, I don't know, you can just follow up with something cool, something that's a bit better, something more value giving. You know, maybe you can just say, hey, do you know what? I was thinking about you the other day and you mentioned this thing, saw this piece of software the other day, that might help you out. Anyway, catch you later. And you can just be a little bit more cool about it. It's like be a bit more James Bond in the club kind of thing, you know, sort of chilled, lean back, right. drink or whatever. You don't have to be sort of like all up in there and a bit needy. You just, you can, you can chill. And then that communicates quite a lot. You know, it doesn't communicate that you don't want a job because you haven't chased it. It communicates like a position of strength and a position of confidence. Like the person isn't chasing us. So it means that they feel more comfortable when they do make a decision, it's going to be a more committed decision because they've intrinsically come to it rather than being battered down. And there are times in a creative relationship with a client where you do kind of have to force their hand a little bit. Like maybe they come up with some really crappy design ideas and you've got to kind of, you know, convince them it's a good idea. Well, it's much easier to do that when you retain a position of strength rather than, yeah, please, please, please buy from me and right. get it and whatever. So you, you know, you might lose two out of a hundred projects by not being over the top with the chasing, but the, the two you would have won would have been crap anyway, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. And another thing that's really, uh, really amazing inside of inside of the software is all the templates you provide. So, you know, I get notifications when you have new templates and stuff like that. Um, but you have things for all kinds of different industries. Now, most people watching this are website designers and developers. Uh, and there's lots of templates in there for specific scenarios, but there's all kinds of templates for everything. So why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about what's available? Yeah, so there's, um, I think there's 140 templates total um the the most i uh, said the most important ones that's highly unfair um the the most in-depth categories are the web design marketing um, and software so those um those there's there's so much there's probably 70 or 80 just for the digital space so if you're in sort of like the design marketing software development world um you know more sort of sh straightforward design, landing pages, SEO, like all that stuff. It's there's a, an absolute abundance of that stuff. So 
all you need to do is just sort of follow your link through and then just click on templates at the top and then you can literally just just search there and just have a real to sort of look through and and see but it's um yeah there's there's other different types of templates as well so i mean what we kind of realized last year was um better proposals if you aren't using it as a proposal tool is definitely used as a contract tool it's the same thing it's just a really pretty one um but you can also use it for things like brochures so you know if you meet somebody at a networking event and maybe they're not ready for a proposal yet but they say oh yeah you know send me some information well on earth do you send them i mean no one's got like those little like tri-fold brochures anymore you're not like handing one of them out it's weird um but this would be a great opportunity to sort of build like a brochure. So it's kind of like an, a, a more in-depth website um, about a specific service perhaps or whatever. So you can sort of build this out into your library of templates of which you can have as many as you like. And then you can just store all that stuff. Anybody who says, oh, you know, send us some more information about your SEO services. No worries, boom, just go in and you can just send that straight to them. And then they've got a whole load more information. And again, then you start to get all that tracking and then you can start and what, what's cool about that too, is y'all have introduced all the merge tags in there too. So if you did want to set this up for a specific person you met at a networking event or whatever, you go in there, create a, a new, you know, we'll call it a proposal, even though this might just be some kind of a uh, cool brochure to show them information, but you can put in their company name, their name, and then mm -hmm. all that information inside of there will dynamically populate with their information. Like you made it specifically for them, which is pretty rad. Uh, I, I will say, uh, kind of talking about the different templates and stuff you have available. I had a deal uh, pretty recently with a, uh, I'm building a website for somebody who is, uh, has, they, their business has nothing. To, it's a finance, you know, industry customer. Um, after, after they got the proposal, they told me uh, they hadn't signed it yet. They told me, Hey, what you sent over is really neat. Uh, could you set something like that up for us? So I went in and edited the proposal and put in, uh, you know, it's a third party cost, like you're going to have to pay for this or whatever, but I'll go in there and help you set up some templates and get you trained on how to use it. And I gave it to them for free as part of the proposal, like as part of the project. And, uh, I mean, I'm going to send them my affiliate link anyways, I'll get paid. Um, and, uh, they signed the proposal because they really want to use that for their business. So uh, that's pretty awesome. That's really that's cool. Great. So you've helped use that to push a job over the line. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so Hey, what, whatever it takes, you know, I, I, <laughs> I did, I did want to say too, kind of, um, in my experience using this and, and how people might want to think about this is, um, I, I hate writing proposals. I've always hated it. It, I like jumping in and doing things. I don't like, I, I, I don't know, something about contracts and proposals. My brain just turns to mush. Um, and when I was able to really take some of the templates you have, I think specifically there's a uh, WP elevation templates specifically in there that, that come from their way of training. And there's lots of people in our group who've been through uh, WP elevation. I've kind of taken that, taken some of the training you have through the university and come up with a, a template that works really well for me and then saved a lot of content in my library. So there's different features that come up on websites all the time. So they might need, you know, a focus on SEO or they might uh, need some kind of directory system or this or that. I've created all these things in my template and I just boom, 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 drop whatever I need in. I change the introduction and kind of like the goals of this project. I change the price. I have a lot of things that kind of standardize pricing and I can just uh, change the numbers where I need to and hit save. So on a simple project, I can log into Better Proposals and send a proposal out in 10 to 15 minutes and I'm completely done with it. Uh, you know, for bigger projects, like you said, it's kind of got a scale, so there might be some more that goes into it, but there's no more spending a day writing a proposal. Those days are completely gone for me, which is a huge relief off of my back. Oh, it's really cool to hear, that's really cool. I think um, it's, it's, it doesn't get old hearing that stuff, but it's, it gets a lot more frequent. You know, you, you do hear it a lot. It's, it's hard sometimes because you think, oh, you know, it's, it's normal to hear that sort of stuff now, but it is so cool to know that something that I struggled with for so many years and we've actually made something to solve that problem, which is, which is really, really nice to hear. But yeah, I'm a random guy in Granbury, Texas, and you literally <laughs> changed the way I run my business. That's got to feel pretty cool. That is really cool. It's wicked to hear. I think what's, what's also so nice as well is that it's, it's, it's expanding from just proposals in terms of, you know, different document types and, you know, the different ways we're thinking and some of the stuff that we're going to be releasing over the next sort of month or so, it, you know, it, it really starts sort of taking that stuff to sort of the, the next level. 
Um, the one thing I, th I think certainly is really relevant for, um, uh, for, for your community as well is, I know for myself, probably the biggest issue I had beyond writing proposals was scope creep and people just moving the project and moving it and moving it and moving it. And then they're just dangling that little like balance carrot in front of you. And they're like, well, when you've done this little bit or made that little text change, then I'll pay the balance. And you're like, yeah, but it was a 50-50 deal. You know, I owe me five grand for changing that piece of text. It's like, you start ju justifying how it's okay because it is just that. And one of the things that we decided to do was um, put a, a series of templates out. I don't know if you've seen these, but um, client sign-off templates. Mm -hmm. um, and these are great because not only can you um, tell the client in advance that this is what's going to happen, but once they start signing these things off, so maybe what you do is you say, okay, right, I'm going to do a load of mock-ups for the design, and then I'm going to send you a sign-off. And then once you've signed that off, then we move into the development stage. But what's really cool is that they know they've signed it off. So you know, like, if you remember the days when, and we've all been there, don't even lie, but... You know, when um, you never got a contract, do you remember those days? Like we oh, used yeah. to work without a contract or any kind of agreement at all. They're you not know. in that distant of the past for me. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, um, I'm old, but yeah, it was, um, we've all been there. You know, we all remember how, you know, even like the price would just change and it was all just weak and sloppy and there's just no control over anything. Um, when you start telling people, look, you know, there's this structure and um, this is what's going to happen. Then you're going to sign this off. Then we're going to do this bit and then you're going to sign that bit off. And then you're going to pay at the end once we've decided that it's done. It, it creates a structure for them and then they won't go against it. So like when you first started introducing contracts, notice that 90% of your issues that you had in your business just went away. And it wasn't because your contract was good. You probably just stole it off of everyone else like we all do. Like there's probably two contracts ever. <laughs> in written. Everybody shares everyone them. Oh, no more. Um, we haven't done that, of course, but, um, you know, you notice that a lot of those problems go away. And why do they do that? It's not because the contract is particularly good. It's because they know they signed something. Right. And so it's like self-regulating, if that makes any sense. They go, well, I signed something. I must have agreed to this process. So they just kind of go along with it. So same kind of thing works with this with this client sign off stuff. You you can start to remove a lot of your scope creep issues if you get them to sign off each stage. So you can do that within 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 better proposals as well, which a lot of people are finding is is really helping keep their project on track. So I'm curious, um, like Kyle Kyle has kind of demonstrated like how much uh, of a benefit it's it's been to him just in uh, in working with people and uh, you know doing this in general. Like as far as feedback goes, like what are uh, what are some of the best stories you've heard, like success stories from people using your software? Well, that was a pretty good one there. <laughs> <laughs> I like to win, Adam. <laughs> um, that's a really good question, actually. It's like some of it just kind of goes in. It's not. It's not that you don't listen to it or don't hear it, but it's uh, you, you sort of hear it so much you can't really. Think, nothing really sort of overly stands out. Um, I think it's some of the little things, you know, it's, it's some of the little things like when people tell you how much time they've saved during a day, that's yeah. some, for me, that's probably the, the biggest thing. Like the money thing is natural. Like if you look at what people were earning the year before they started using better proposals and then you compare that to the 12 months afterwards, I would be shocked if there's anybody that, you know, wasn't a significant increase. So that guaranteed to make more money. Go sign up. <laughs> I didn't say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> I said it. It's cool. <laughs> they know so I'm a the, Yeah, the adminbar.com right. slash better proposals. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, for me, it's the time saving. And I think that's, a, you know, be, being sort of a product guy, that that for me is probably the biggest, um, the biggest difference in like helping you improve processes and getting their clients to, you know, want of a better term like sort their shit out basically you know making sure that they're they've got a better control over their company because i think look you know this this freelancing gig i mean i did it for years and it's hard it's it's really hard when you work from home you don't have you know if you've got like a, a local community really good stuff use that stuff you really use it but i didn't and it's it's really really difficult you've got to get up every day and you've got to motivate yourself to battle through just the simple fact you probably won't see daylight you know especially in the winter 
You know, you're just not going to go outside. You're going to stay in and you just be working in front of this computer for, you know, we've all done like these crazy 16 hour days. It's hard work. So when you find that people say things like, you know, I've saved X number of hours a week or a couple of hours a day or whatever, doing these proposals and things, and that's helping them chip away at getting their life back a little bit. That's really cool to hear. And, you know, to have that just sort of come out some mad idea out of my weird little autistic brain. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's cool. It is cool. Yeah. And I, I mean, say, I- in, in that case, I mean, you're not just, um, you're not just saving time for that one particular person, but I mean, you're, you're freeing them up for their family. You're freeing them up for their friends. Like, I mean, it goes way more than just their own time, which it was of course, super important. But I mean, just the, uh, the thought that, you know, by saving these people time, like you're giving time to their families, like that's super cool. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's so many little knock on effects and, you know, we've all been on holidays and just been dragged away on work and stuff. And it's, it's hard. I mean, it's something that doesn't really get spoken about in this community enough. I mean, a lot of people talk about things like mental health and things like that. Cause it's a nice little fancy buzzword these days, but I think it's sort of in a way it almost runs deeper than that. And it's just a, there's a fundamental failure in the structure of how freelancers have to work in order to, you know, produce a half sensible income for themselves. And I think that's a real shame. So when you have little tools like this, that, you know, can make it easier to say to your client, it's going to be this amount of money, or there is this process, you know, F and respect it, you know, like there, it, it's hard to do that. And if you look at the types of personalities that you have in this community, a lot of the people that are in it are introverted. They don't like confrontation. They'd rather just say yes and go with it than cause a confrontation and potentially upset somebody. And you, you look at like a personality type of an industry and that would be it in a nutshell. And how do you combat that? How do you kind of fight that? And, uh, you know, if this, you know, if our little weird tool can do even just a tiny fraction of a percent to sort of chip away at that, life's work done. I'm, I'm happy. Cause well, I think, I think you're already there. I can tell you, I went, it went, writing proposals went from something I dreaded and hated doing to something that I don't even think about now. Like I'll just go back to the office and write this up. It'll be 10 minutes. I'll send it off and we'll go on with life. Like that's the benefit to me is I no longer have to think about it. Like it's just I think what's pretty cool about that is the fact that it is exactly that part. It's not necessarily the, the minutes saved. It's the fact that you don't dread it. And when you have that and it switches, you go, Oh, actually it's not a thing I need to think about anymore. It's amazing how many you then get on with it quicker because it's not a procrastination moment anymore Mm -hmm. and then because that's happening you get it done quicker we know that that makes a difference in your conversion so this whole thing is like this upward you say with a downward spiral it's an upward spiral in a way so it's it's just it perpetuates you know and it's a it's a really good thing and you do it more you get better at it you don't dread proposals you do more of them and you know it all just it all just perpetuates and it's um it's a good thing it's 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 one of those things that's just if you had to pick one task to get good at over the next like three or four months, it's probably the single biggest or easiest thing you can get good at um, to make a massive difference. There's not many other things I think that move the needle quite as much as as getting this handled. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Well, man, we certainly appreciate you joining us today. I know uh, we dropped a lot of uh, good tips on people and I'm sure they're gonna be going and checking out better proposals. Like I said, I've been using it for a long time. If anybody's got any questions, they're they're more than welcome to ask me and I will uh, gladly share my feedback with them. Matt, did I miss anything before we wrap this up and get out of here? No, I don't think we missed anything, but uh, I do want to summarize that, uh, you know, get the proposals uh, written as soon as possible, ditch the PDF. Like, you know, if you're doing it uh, right after the meeting, then you're going to be able to use your uh, your client's vocabulary, which is hugely important. Um, you know, own your price. We went over that and, uh, just, yeah, ditch those PDF proposals. Nice. Well, Adam, uh, how can people connect with you or follow along with you, uh, so they can gain some more of this knowledge? Um, so one of the things that you can do is, um, if you go and sign up for a trial of better proposals, then you will have me communicating with you. Uh, via some sort of automated space. But if you have any questions, you can of course respond to any of that stuff. And I try and pick up as much as I possibly can. But if I can't, then you're in the hands of our 
uh, customer success team as well. So you're um, you're more than looked after. Um, I've I can vouch for that one. I, I've I've hit that up a few times, so I can vouch for that. He's correct. Good. Um, yeah, you can um, you can follow along with our blog as well. Um, we try to put out something really cool content wise, roughly every sort of three to four months, like really 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 good stuff. Um, so you sort of keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, follow us along on Facebook and we've got a little Facebook group somewhere around. So keep tabs on the new bits we're releasing and, and things like that. But it's all the usual stuff. Just search Better Proposals anywhere and you'll find us. Awesome. awesome. Well, we, re- we really appreciate you being on the show. I, I really appreciate uh, everything you've done to help my business. So thank you. Uh, awesome. Thank you. All right, guys, as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to, to share the content, subscribe to our podcast or YouTube channel and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. We'll catch you all inside the group. Bye-bye. <laughs>